Recess Podcast. Recess Podcast is dedicated to shining light on urban youth baseball and softball across the country. We are now in season three. Everybody give a visual clap. Um, I got a very special guest today that's going to talk some baseball with you and, and in the great state of Georgia. But before we get started, whatever you're doing, make sure you go download the Black Baseball Matters app. You can find it on the Google and Apple Play Store. You can watch this um, episode over and over again through the app. Um, so with that being said, we have the head baseball coach, Sky Hemmings. Um, He's doing a marvelous job at Albany State. It, I'm going to let him tell you a little bit about his background. He got started playing baseball. Um, but for right now, everybody go follow, follow Albany State on all social media. So go ahead, Coach Scott. How did you, how did you get involved with uh, baseball and what landed you to Albany State? So uh, long story short, kind of the Reader's Digest version, I, I played Columbus High School. I was drafted by the Yankees out of high school, um, signed. It was, back then it was draft and follow, so I signed and played two years of junior college. Drafted by the eight, in the 18th round by the San Diego Padres and um, went and played four years of professional baseball, three with the Padres, and I went back to a spring training with Detroit. Like most minor leaguers, I got hurt, got released, but loved the game. And uh, started coaching right away with uh, my brother-in-law at Chattahoochee Valley Community College in Phoenix City, Alabama. I spent two years there, four years as a head coach in a junior college. I went back to a high school in Phoenix City, Alabama, um, Central High School, very prominent program that had kind of taken a downward turn. I went back there and took them back to the playoffs for the first time in six years um, when um, Darton College called and, and offered me the job at a, another junior college here in Albany. Uh, we came in, became one of the best junior colleges in the country. Still have a couple guys up and down the big leagues off our last team. Went to a World Series in 2016 when the Board of Regents came in and merged the two schools together, which made Albany State and Darton into one school in the same city. Um, the president brought me in at the time. Um, it was Dr. Carvajal, and um, he asked me – he was the president at, at Darton – and he asked me if I'd be interested in sticking around. Um, I, I loved Albany. I loved the city. Um, my wife had a great job. I had two, two girls in school and a son in school. And so um, we decided to stay in Albany. Um, first year, trying to merge the two teams together, um, had his different levels of complications, nothing more than just putting together two completely different teams, really competing over jobs. And in 2018, we beat the number two team in the country, Tampa, um, two out of three times, went to a national regional, won a conference championship, and probably had the best player in the country that year in Rolani Familia, um, who was a Latin player who had come on at Darton and then came back to Albany State with me. Um, so I've been coaching 21 years now. This is my 21st year. 19 of those as a head coach. And um, just – and we played in seven out of nine conference championship games as I've been here two years being covid and uh, our last uh, number one that we had um, back in 2021, Malik Barrington, is having an outstanding career with the Minnesota Twins right now. So we're finally, from once we were junior college, we were getting some pro draft picks. Now we're finally starting to, to get that same player in here and, and getting into the next level. So we're just thrilled to death about what we've been able to do and, and really excited that Malik is still playing. Man, nice. So you, 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 you're you bringing – you know, to merge two you know, two schools, man, I know that was a lot of late nights and a, a lot of stiff drinks to make that thing work. Well, I mean, it's just a lot of prayer because you're trying to you're trying to merge two completely different institutions, one being a junior college and one being a historically black college. And at the end of the day, what we tried to do is 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 bring in a yeah. team and create a culture that that is uh, a great culture for everybody. And, and our three main things are, are you a better student, a better player, and a better person? And uh, we have to learn how to get along with people from all walks of life. And and uh, the easiest way to do that is treat everybody in, in the way you want to be treated and regardless of the color of their skin or where they're from. And because at the end of the day, we all have to go out and work for, for a living. And, and in 2022, the, the, the world is a very diverse place. And so um, we, we embrace that and, and we like it. We have guys from all over the world and um, just really like the culture that we have. And, 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 and believe it or not, last year and with the transfer portal and, and the crazy, craziness of that, right, wrong, or indifferent, um, that's not the topic here. But we only had two guys enter the transfer portal last year, and that was because they were graduate transfers that their time had ran out here. So that speaks volume of the culture that we have, that we don't even have guys entering the transfer portal. Man, no, you, you got to say that again for the people in the back that they hear, you know, uh, a Baptist preacher voice, but no. And I'm going to allude to that a little bit. Like right now, um, NCAA, all sports with the transfer portal, man, it's like they're jumping 
they're, they're jumping from school to school and everything. And for the kids to really stay there, that speaks volume on you and your coaching staff. That's big ups and salute to you guys for that. Um, um, going into, you know, you and your coaching staff, what, what style of baseball you guys play at Albany State? Well, we kind of got away from – I really like guys that can run. Back in 2012, 13, we had the fifth, one of the fastest 60 times in the in the country here in Ventavious Jerger on our scout day. He ran a 61960, which that's absolutely floating down the street. Um, we had a center fielder run a 6-3, our second base. We, we had – I think we had five or six, six, six runners or better that year, and we were 184 stolen bases that year in the country. And so then the game kind of changed a little bit, and we got away from that. We went a little bit more bigger baseball, which that doesn't work. And to me, it doesn't. Everybody's different. I mean, the, the players that we're able to get here, they're, they're not home run hitters. Um, and so we have to go back to that. Now we're back to where we can run a little bit. So when we have those guys, we do like to bunt and move the ball around. Now our three-hole hitter, Lavoisier Fisher, um, is one of the best players that, that I've ever coached, and he's a center fielder. And and um, he can hit the ball over the fence, so we allow him to do that. But but everybody else, I like to run. I like to bunt. I like to play the game the way it was designed to be played. And and because every time we try to hit a home run, we hit the ball away to the left fielder. We never get it over the fence. So um, we're, we're kind of getting back to that. We got some guys that can really, really run. And that's the fun style of baseball. If you remember back in the 80s when the St. Louis Cardinals played, everybody watched the Cardinals. I mean, my little league team was the Cardinals because they had Vince Coleman and and when I tell my guys who's Vince Coleman, I don't know, I don't know who Vince Coleman is. <laughs> they had Vince Coleman and Willie McGee and Ozzie Smith, and those guys could run. And then you turn around and you say, well, were they any good? Yeah, they only won about 100 World Series. And and, they, <laughs> and, and, and then the game's kind of gotten away from that. And you look at the Royals just a few years ago. What could they do? They could run. Run. And so guys that can run can play here. And because speed shows up every day. So I like that athlete who can get out of the box, who can change the game with the first or third. And so to answer your question is we like guys that can run. Absolutely. Um, talk to us a little bit about the program direction. I know we talked about the style of play, but talk to us about the program direction. So our direction is, is, is the mainstay every year is if we're not competing for conference titles and we're not getting into a regional, that's a disappointing season, no matter which way you look at it. I mean, we're all about developing people. We're all about, you know, wanting them to live a healthy and, and, a, and a successful lifestyle. But at the end of the day, it's hard to impact individuals if you're not winning. OK, you can be a you can you can preach to them, you can bring in speakers, you can have team building environment, you can have the safest and most awesome environment that you could ever imagine. And you lose and you've impacted hardly anybody. And I think sometimes in sports, we forgot that is that winning is important and and, and winning also creates that better person because that that winner has to show up early, stay late, work hard, do right off the field. Minor decisions equal big results, and winners make the minor decisions each and every day that separate themselves from everybody else that, that, that's out there. And and, 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 and and I tell our guys, we have guys from Australia, Canada. We have a Venezuelan assistant coach. Um, we got guys from the north. We got the guys from the south. And, and I tell them, winners – make those little decisions that equal big results every day. So that's the direction we want to take our program is, are we winning? And then if we're winning, then that means everything else in the program is running itself. The definition of winning is <clears throat> if a person leaves today, if I quit my job today and said I'm done with it, could the operation still run effectively because all processes are put in place? Yes, that means you're a winner. That means that no matter who's in charge, they can run that program because all the processes are in place. And so that's the direction we like our program to be in. Man, you dropping some, uh, uh, you, you, I'm going to have a couple of uh, quotes from you on Twitter. After <laughs> this, man, I, that was, man, you got me with, I got my long sleeve on, but you got chills coming down. <laughs> my arms. Thanks for that coach. I love it. Um, now, you know, I stumbled across parents and we spoke about that a little earlier, but, coaching in the high school world and dealing with showcasing, going all over travel ball. Um, what I see is sometimes the parents, and which I want you to speak to the parents, the parents really 
are listening to the internet about recruitment process, which is fine. Everybody has their own, you know, their own philosophy, right? But I tell the parents, baseball is like old school rock and roll. That that note is going to be the same note. The, 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 the coaches are looking for players that fit their system. It's nothing personal. If you don't fit their system, it's not, they don't like, look, not dislike them as a person. But what are some advice that you can give to juniors, sophomores and juniors going to their senior year on how to get recruited by for, for to play college baseball? You know, that's a great question because I'm dealing with it with my daughters right now in, in soccer. Um, the biggest advice that I can give them is don't spend all your money in one place. You know, you you get a you get a you get a, a kid and he plays his high school team and then he then he goes and he plays travel baseball all summer. And then at the end of the summer, he goes into fall baseball. Well, what I what I recommend, and I'm doing it with my daughters, we we take our money, and, and we, there's only so much money to give. I mean, I'm I'm a coach, and so oh. we, we take a pot of money, and we say what's going to be important. So I want my daughters to play, but then we just spent some money on a personal trainer, and then are their grades good? Well, sometimes we have to spend a little money to. And we haven't had any private tutors yet, but sometimes you got to spend a little money on a private tutor. And and can your and can your kid eat right? You know, so what you're trying to do as a parent is for those four years that they're in high school, is you're trying to get the most bang for your buck so your kid can be seen the most by the most amount of schools. Because, like you just said, are they a fit for this program? He might be the best player in the world, but I might not need him this year. And so you want to span your money and your resources out to give them to be the complete player and student. So when they walk into college, they are ready to go and they're a well old machine. And so when I tell the parents, don't spend all your money, travel ball is great. I'm, I'm for it. We play it, but I can't afford to just play travel ball because I've also got to spend some money in some other areas. And then I have to rest a little bit. So play your travel ball. Me and my son, he plays about four, four or five tournaments. OK, then I'm going to attack some of the great showcases, not the money makers, but where I'm going to get the most bang for my buck. We have a showcase camp coming up next Saturday, and it's almost completely full with a week to go because we do a recruiting profile for the parents of financial planning. We give strength and conditioning talk. We give a what a high school player is missing. We call it a camp more than a showcase, but we have 11 schools that come in as well. And so they're learning all about how the game is played, what the reality of college baseball is. So you attack three or four showcase and prospect camps a year of schools that are going to be there that you want to and do your homework, give, get testimonies about that showcase. Are they any good? Because some of them are good and some of them are not good. Okay. If I'm going to go play this tournament this weekend, where am I going to go? How much is it going to cost me? Who's going to be there? Are we playing in front of people? Okay. Then don't spend that fall of your junior and senior playing. Spend that fall going to visit schools and programs that you're interested in. You can take as many unofficial visits that you want. So for a hundred bucks, a tank of gas and a lunch, you can go visit, visit schools all around you within a hundred mile radius, just a couple weeks, weekends of the year. So what I tell parents is be wide and broad about everything so your kid doesn't make the mistake to have to go into the portal. If you do your homework on the front end, then you're in a program for four years and your kid's going to thrive in that program under that coach's leadership. He's not going to lose hours. He's not going to have to go prove himself. You're not going to have to spend an astronomical amount of money moving him from apartment to apartment. So make the right decision and don't make the mistake, both the player and the coach. And if you do all those things, you're, you're going to have your homework done. And then it boils down to, is your kid good enough? And, and, and that's what sometimes I think parents don't like to face that reality. It's okay to go walk on to somewhere. Don't be ashamed of walking on. Okay. You've got division one schools. You got the Auburns, the Alabamas, the Georgia. That's awesome. But man, there is a lot of good baseball in division two, division three, small mid majors, junior college, NAIA. Don't just be so hung up on, I want to play at this level because there's astronomically good coaches at every level. I mean, you come into the HBCU league, there's great coaches, man. I'm talking about great coaches. And, you know, so don't pigeonhole yourself into, I'm going to go here. Well, th then you're going to be left with a, a basket of emptiness if that that's your mindset uh, of where you want to go. Be open to going anywhere. I mean, so that's the way I kind of feel about recruiting. Scott, man, you just – 
you touched on so many nuggets and, and we've been pre like, yes, 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 yes. And you know, for this, we don't have to do it. Definitely a, a part two. I might have to uh, drive down uh, the army from Chicago and everything on my camera. Um, but in, Hey, look, in, just get, let's, let me, let me just fly up there. Cause I got a cousin up there that I hadn't seen in about 20 years and I can get a cheap flight and I got to eat some of that pizza. So we just let yeah, me know. Absolutely. So we'll do this. Um, Chicago White Sox been on Double Duty Classic. I don't know if you heard of it. Uh, Double Duty Classic bring kids from across the country and primarily in Chicago. They put together this all-star game in honor of Ted Double Duty Radcliffe. We have a uh, college showcase. I'll send you. I'll connect you with the people who put it on there. Like it's it's fantastic. Yeah, I flew All up there a couple of years ago. The okay. White Sox do that. Um, yeah. And I can't remember the name of the field. It was in the middle of a, a neighborhood, and it's got this beautiful turf field. And I went up there. Proc Center, yeah. About, Proc, yeah. Proc Center, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, Coach, you know, anybody that's um, looking to reach out to you and everything and pick your brain about baseball or interest in Albany State, where can they find you at? We, I'm not a social media person, not because I'm I, – I just don't do it. My family doesn't do it, but my, my assistant coach, Grant Reynolds, who's phenomenal – it's a, at ASU Rams Baseball, <clears throat> and he does a wonderful job on our Twitter page. He does lineups before the game. He has great graphics. People follow us all over the place. He highlights different players and keeps it up to date. So at ASU Rams Baseball is, is our Twitter feed, and it's really good. you got to be careful because there's another school that's ASU, um, it's Angelo State, I think, so some people get us confused. Um, but, but we have a really good Twitter feed, and – and our other assistant coach, Luis Martinez, is a is a huge Twitter guy as well. I, I'll be honest with you, I don't even know what these kids get on anymore. I mean, that Instagram, <laughs> you know, so we we got it all. Hey. Well, Coach Scott, thank you so much um for joining us. For everybody who watching this, make sure you go follow ASU Rams on Twitter. Make sure it's Albany State, you know, not the other school. Um also, make sure you follow Coach EO Guru, follow Black Race All Matters, and go download the app because we're providing, you know, services and connecting resources to everybody in the world.